What had happened in the SABC, there's been a, a huge cross-functional gap. We're closing those gaps, and those gaps are actually equating to, to increases in revenue. And we're finding that the behavior of people listening to radio is also moving to the online space where they particularly focus on podcasting. Um, and that's an area of um, attracting people onto your websites. And next to those podcasting sites, we're already working on creating malls. That means that if you go to a radio site of the SABC, uh, you could be purchasing all sort of other things uh, for, um, to increase our funding as well. So we have plans for that in place. Some of it does require a bit of investment, um, but we, 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 we look at all avenues to, to try and fund this. Another question that was asked uh, by, by Honourable is um, what's happening to losses on TV viewership? Um, I just want to add on to what the, the CEO has mentioned. Most of our losses in viewership relate to content over prime time, because that's when the SABC makes most of its money. Um, and whilst we're not spending on content, our competitors like ETV and DSTV are spending on content. And if they have more compelling content, um, you'll find that your audiences start moving away. At the moment, the SABC enjoys the top three programs in the country. I think that's a significant achievement um, under the, the conditions that the SABC operates, but it's not sustainable to maintain um, those uh, top three audiences. And that does include Movangu, um, uh, Skimsam and, and Uzalu. Um, the, the other question that was asked uh, was around enhancing quality for the African market, African stations. The SABC as a media operator is unique in that it talks to all 11 official languages, including Akoi and San languages on, on, on XKFM, which I'm particularly interested in. And um, what we're starting to do is we're starting to move our associated websites into the vernacular. So if you look like at Zalo at the moment, you now have a vernacular option to go into it, into Zulu, um, and in that you can start accessing and enjoying the true benefits of the website, but also gaining access to, to podcasts. The other thing we're also doing um, with our radio stations is a refocus on brand association, because there's been a veer away from what the actual brand represents, and if you lose the brand, you, you lose the audience, because our radio stations are very much belong to communities. Um, and in most areas of South Africa, you'll find that our people believe that their radio station in their particular region belongs to them. Um, um, then from a cost perspective, oh, sorry, I forgot, one of the other things as well is we learn a lot and we get a lot of feedback about our linear radio stations as well as TV through Twitter, social media, um, uh, Facebook, uh, and we take all of that information and we actually do something with that information. Uh, from a cost perspective, um, besides the people costs being quite high, uh, there is also a focus on the costs of certain content, and here I'm particularly speaking about sports content, and a huge focus is around uh, ensuring that we become very transparent around the content that we buy, particularly for soccer. Um, then the last one that I want to answer particularly uh, looks at opportunities for growth and confidentiality. I think we're always going to be confidential around specific strategic initiatives because we have to be mindful that although we're the public broadcaster, our funding still comes from a competitive environment, which is DSTV and ETV. And um, if a lot of those trade secrets are out there in the market tomorrow, they pursue a strategies that's counterintuitive to us. Thanks, Chair. Um, thank, thank you very much, Chair. I am just going to try.